This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. Greetings. In this video, we're going to talk about a method called limits by conjugates. Let's get started. Well, let's first talk about what a conjugate is. So let's say that we had a binomial like x plus 2. And uh, if we were to take this binomial and we were to multiply it by its conjugate, well, what's a conjugate? A conjugate is not quite the opposite. You'll notice that the only thing that is the opposite is the middle. So here it started out being a plus, now it's a minus. You know, the x is still the same. It's a positive x and a positive x here, so that hasn't changed. It's just this middle term. When you multiply two conjugates, which are not opposites, an interesting thing occurs, right? If you use first outer inner last, otherwise called FOIL, or the double distributive property, you get x squared, you get minus 2x plus 2x, and a minus 4. Now, what you'll notice is this: these middle two terms cancel because you, they're opposites of each other. And you get this. Yep, that's called a difference of two squares. Yes, a difference of two squares factors to conjugates. And this works for a lot of things. And um, it could be kind of nasty. A matter of fact, it's a nice little fact when you get to complex numbers. So let's say I even create something that looks like that. Well, the conjugate would just be 3x plus 5. Okay, and I'm not going to go all through the steps here, but if you do multiply, you're going to get a 9x squared minus 25. So the middle terms cancel. It's a nice little property, and it comes in handy in a couple different places in mathematics later, which we're going to talk about next. All right, well, what I'd like to do is to put a problem up here that requires this technique of limits by conjugate technique that I'm referring to. So uh, let's say we had a problem that said we're going to find the limit as x approaches 3. Okay, and uh, here in the numerator of a rational expression, we have the 2x minus 5 all on a radical, and then we've got a minus 1. Yeah, bad looking fraction, but we got a minus 3 down here. Okay, so let's say we had this problem and we're trying to find the limit of it. The problem is, if you take this three, right, if I, if I were to take this number three and substitute it in here, three minus three is zero, you got a zero in the denominator, that's a bad thing for a rational expression. You can't have zeros in denominators. Uh, see, when you use an analytical method like factoring, you know, normally we could factor, sometimes you can cancel some factors, that gets rid of some things. There's no way to factor here. So one strategy that people use is to multiply by a conjugate. Um, okay, so now I will tell you this is a bad step. This particular conjugate. If I multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator, okay, if I, if I were to multiply this way. Now this is something that you do when you divide complex numbers, but when I multiply those guys together, I'm gonna get x squared minus nine. And then if I were to plug this value in, I'm going to get 3 squared minus 9, right? That's 9 minus 9, and I'm going to get a 0 in the denominator anyway, okay? So when I multiply by the conjugate of the denominator, it doesn't work. All right, well, you think, okay, well, boy, this is a short-lived video. Whew, can't find a strategy that works. No, okay, I am going to use conjugates, but instead I'm going to find the conjugate of the numerator. So here's 2x minus 5. But now I'm going to put a plus here, plus 1. There's the conjugate of the numerator. And I now multiply, of course, the top and bottom have to be the same. I have to multiply by that. Okay, now what happens when we multiply? Well, we're going to do some distributive property. Okay, just make that a little bit neater. Boy, I'm being a little sloppy here. Okay, now what happens in the denominator when we multiply? Well, I'm not going to multiply. Why? I've done a number of these problems to know what happens when you do multiply. It's not necessary to multiply these things in the denominator. Okay, so what do you do? You just leave the denominator as if you wanted to multiply those two factors together. Okay, so now let's go to the numerator. 
So if you're gonna multiply, you gotta do the distributive property. So I'm gonna have to multiply like this, right? And then I'm gonna have to multiply and do the same thing by the negative one. When I multiply the two radicals, the radicals cancel. So I'm gonna get two X minus five. Okay, and then when I multiply the radical times one, I get one times the radical. All right, it looks like I'm gonna need some more room. I'm gonna move over more. Okay, now I'm gonna do some more distributive property. I'm gonna multiply by the negative one, right? So you gotta double distribute when you're multiplying these guys. So I'm gonna get a minus radical and negative one times one is a negative one. All right, so there you go. We get quite a mess in the numerator. And uh, when you look at the numerator, you should notice that these two terms cancel. Okay, why do they cancel? Well, because they're opposites of each other. So that cleans up things nicely. So it looks like our numerator is only has a two X in it. And then we have a negative five plus negative one makes a negative six. All right, and the denominator is not changing. Okay, so over here I get square root 2x minus five plus one. Okay, good so far. Now, if you look closely at that numerator, uh, this numerator, because right now at this point you're looking at the numerator and denominator and going, hey, nothing cancels. But if you look at this numerator right here, this right here, you could see that I could factor out a 2. Okay, so if we factor out a 2, we get that. Now what's the benefit of factoring out a 2? Now I can reduce this fraction. Now I'm going to do this a little bit lighter. I've been doing this a little too dark. So I'm going to cancel this 2x minus 3. 2x minus 3, they cancel. Okay, now what does that leave us with? Uh, where's my marker? Here it is. So the limit as x approaches 3. Now our numerator is 2 times 1, which is just a 2. And now all I have is this part over here, which is that square root. 2x minus 5 plus 1. All right, life is good. See, the problem was, if I just back up a step, if I were to plug this three in here for x, I would get three minus three, I get zero. See, there's that factor of zero in the denominator, which is bad news, that was causing us a problem. But now when you look at the situation, I now can substitute. I can put this three in for x, so now I no longer need to write the limit since I'm now evaluating this expression. So I'm going to drop in the 3 and I guess I should show the work. So I'm taking 2 times 3 minus 5 all plus 1. Okay so what does that give us? That gives us a 2. Here this is 6 minus 5 that's 1. Square root of 1 is 1. I get 2 over 2 which is 1. And there you go. There's the answer to the problem. Okay, this was called, this process is called the limits by conjugates, and we're done. Now, I'd like you to go back to mathguide.com, and if you could check out our interactive quizzes, all our lessons, and, of course, hundreds of videos. Take care.